alternative dig talk real issues real talk fellow citizens following the sequence of events uganda seems to be at political crossroads <laughs> I'm not a servant of anybody. Madam, I know the law. As such, Alternative Digital brings you the Interfest show with retired Colonel Dr. Kiza Vesuje. Let's keep on the same page on Alternative Digital. As he gives you the alternatives on the transition question, rule of law, human rights and freedom, youth inclusion in governance, economic stagnation as he confirms. I'll be always here Saturday from 10 a.m. in the morning. Be there. Don't miss the live discussion on the Alternative Uganda, Digital TV Facebook pages and the Alternative Uganda YouTube channel. Migrant stakeholders run BRB Mwebili Jemi sinde jigenda kufela kusawe kololo Kusende nga bili oktoba Tudu kwa kusonde sento kudabilize chifo E chifu dabu dabu mkuma chie yonga bako mieho E dembe ni banda Uganda bako lewe Bufu na njizu wabu afe E rachi tukakatako Okuluwa ni le dembe no buwenkanya Mumine mujaba mkuma chie yo Nolwe cho We tabe mkudabilize chifo chino Ngogula kiti ya mtuwale bili na chitundu Okuwa kupeto station za shell Shell kabalagara Shell lugogo Capital Shell na janankumbi Shell na sana Shell na mave Ne shell bulo you are Gidwa Star Times, Reham, Fresh Diary, Roofings, Housing Finance Bank, Maritime Cargo. All on every Christmas back office here present with Swanga Semitana wa Mayanja. You were a migrant worker's voice. Never take a care of you. See that advertising. The Alternative Dig Talk. Real Issues. Real Talk. on Wednesday, uh, this very week, with the reason is that we are more than justifiable, because he had been invited by uh, by the Makindi Division leadership to, uh, to be part of the visit of the Katikiro of Buganda at the division. We want to begin straight away by asking him to say hello to our viewers, and most likely also give us a hint on what transpired while there. Uh, thank you, Norman. Uh, good morning, viewers. I uh, salute you all in your respective positions and honors. Uh, what he has said is true. Yesterday, I was invited by the mayor of much in the division and also the Mulanjela of our area who happens to be also the Gombola chief of Machinje to attend a very important function where the Katikyo of Buganda Mayeka was visiting us and seeing important statements regarding the welfare and the governance of the Kingdom of Uganda. And what he said, which is true, I have been a big friend of the Kabaka of Uganda, Mutebi the second, ever since we were both in exile in the UK. And uh, the Katikyo said, I am not only somebody who has served this country well, but I am a very close friend of Uganda through the Kabaka, of whom <coughs> I am Musajja. Ndi msaji waka baka. O mchiga. Ngandi wano. <laughs> Na hezi ndi mchiga. Na zali kukie kigezi. 
Tetuli na ba kingsi. Na yendi msajo waka waka. Okay. Atesho. Nchisimila ruwanga. Katuonda. Ochenyu mirizamu. Edo chisimila katuonda. Thank you. Yeah, with, we are with Justice Kanyahamba. You know, uh, I think for some reasons he stubbornly refused to speak in Uganda. But of late we have now realized that you, you are a good Muganda. You know, Muganda have that thing of Muganda Gele is someone who becomes a Muganda by the virtue of their walking towards or shifting to Muganda. No money, but you jump or you get a massive. I can see Ruali, Udimbe, or Uganda, Yogera. Nice to go get a Dunji. Maybe Nadi Minister Webby of Subuzi. Ningen there were no number of Uganda. Nothing can you get a Uganda. Mwala wange ba muita bete na bitofsi e muganda yali muganda ngasi na ba kumu kumu wa kumu sura mwala wange e kile na juu tebanga tebamba uzi nyogere ne singa bamba uzi na ndipo zanga baga mbapo na muganda na anga ni Mwalo uwande kibi ntubi yaani. Leta kwa shifana ni kawa kampa ebi nti chua na nta nwa ishitibwa na mpe chifana ni. Ok. Jireti tushilage by viewers. Ok, fine. As we bring the photo, we want to first of all congratulate the nine members of parliament yesterday that were voted to become uh, Uganda's representatives to the East African Legislative Assembly. Did you watch or uh, even follow the entire... Not only did I watch, mm. no. but I was supporting one of the candidates. Mm. Uh, he lost, unfortunately. Your candidate <laughs> lost? My candidate lost. Mm. But uh, I am not worried because that is what the democracy is about. Mm. Uh, I, I am told that uh, the parliament mm. uh, uh, performed very well, mm. uh, and there was no fighting as there was before yes. when they elected those mm. of East Africa. But what they don't know, mm. uh, maybe through you, yes. I wanted to invite all those who were elected members of Parliament of, of East the East African Legislature yes. to come here. And I have a, a, a discussion with them. Because what many of them don't know is that when I was a, a student in the UK, mm. I was the president of the East African Association for all the countries of East Africa, mm -hmm. campaigning for unity of our country. Mm. And unless you know history of your country and your region, you lack some qualities of being a representative of that region. So through you, and you will get me their telephone number, I'm inviting all the members who have been elected. And we're not going to talk about politics, so they shouldn't fear. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, on a lighter uh, note, we, we, we like uh, Justice Kanyahamba uh, promised, and this is the photo taken on Wednesday uh, this week, the day we we're supposed to host him, but this uh, event was more, uh, more important than our show, to be honest with all of us. And this is the photo uh, of Justice Kanyahamba with the Katikiro of Buganda with an appreciation certificate uh, to Justice Kanyahamba towards all the works he has done for both Buganda as a kingdom, but also Uganda as a country. This is proof, uh, and you know, with the lawyers, they speak with uh, authenticity and proof. So here we go. This is the photo of um, this week, Wednesday, when we're supposed to have him. But nonetheless, he has compensated by uh, having us today to take all of us through uh, citizenship. Well, having said that, we shall have to continue with our show and ask him straight away some tough questions about the citizenship. But before we go to citizenship, Justice Kanyahamba, do you see, given the history of the previous legislators that we have had representing Uganda to East African Legislative Assembly, do you think these people that we have this time sent will add something more tangible? Or it's, uh, mm. I am very hopeful that uh, 
the new legislative assembly of East Africa will achieve some of the objectives we stand for for the region and many of those members who have been elected from Uganda are very honorable and hard working. So I have confidence that they will do good work there. They are joining other members of the, the East Africa, including the oldest Kenya, Tanzania representatives, Rwanda, new one, new West, Zaire, uh, and Burundi, of course, before that. And the combined wisdom of these legislatures guiding and working for the East African community will help us. I was among the very first with Uganda, Kenya, and Tanzania students to campaign for the unity okay. and the federation of East Africa. And I hope our dream will be realized. This is the final question to that regard. Um, what is your take in regards to the, the, the NOOP boycott? Because they, boy, they did not vote, they considered that um, entire election and Yala things being irrelevant to them and they boycotted the <laughs> elections. <laughs> That's a what? very, very good question. You know, when I was in the government, I offered my resignation twice for specific reasons. But I was aware of the effect of resignation. my resignation would have. You must always know what boycott and, and uh, uh, resignation have the same kind. You are withdrawing from what you should be doing. So in one case, I knew if President Museveni accepted my resignation, it would severely damage the reputation of the NRM. And he knew it. So he withdrew the policy he was proposing. I knew he would withdraw it. Otherwise, it would damage his government. The second one is when they detained Moses Ali or Malo Tubu and that leave two others illegally. But we had an understanding with the president that no one of that caliber would be arrested or detained without me as attorney general advising the president first. When I was in China on a foreign mission, Moses Ali, Omar Otubu, and another one were arrest, arrested and detained for treason. When I came, I offered my resignation to President Museveni. He said, why? I said, you and I had an understanding that you can never arrest or detain a minister or member of parliament or a permanent secretary unless my ministry has put in a word of advice. You are detained these people without, when I was in China, and the Solicitor General has told me he didn't even know Solicitor General then was a Mr. Peter Kavasi. So that's why I'm resigning. Then he, he said, Kanyamba, you are very cantacaras. By the way, when you use the word cantacaras, I think you are abusing them. <laughs> when you are advising them. He said, however, I see your point. So he immediately ordered the 
release of Moses Ali and Omar Otubo, and the other one who was, uh, I've forgotten the name, who was detained. And they sued the government. And they were awarded millions of shillings, which had to be paid by the government, for illegal arrest and detention. So I am writing a book called President, His Excellency President Yoweri Museven, and his shadow, Mr. Tibu Haburwa. If you have a president who no longer respects or allows advice, I have written in the defeat of President Museven, he should be forced to resign if he doesn't do so. So how does, the, how does the act of boycott... Uh, so I'm become, coming to that, because complex. I haven't forgotten your question. Yeah. Boycott, you say, I'm going to boycott, to boycott elections and the East African community matters. Mm. We have had today, yesterday, Ugandan members of the elections that were appointed. Boycott doesn't affect them. Hmm. We, Kenya, Burundi, Rwanda, Tanzania, and uh, the Democratic Republic of Congo are today also, or some other time, appointing electing. or ap electing. electing members of the uh, of, of the East African community. community. The boycott does not affect them. So in your view, it was... So they will be all there, functioning normally, making laws for East Africa, without the input of NOOP. Of NOOP. Does that mean it was counterproductive, in your view? Pardon? Does that mean it was counterproductive, in your view? It will NOOP? be counterproductive. Because it has no purpose. When you boycott, things are unknown. I remember in one play, the Prime Minister of Britain said, you must not boycott this. Because if you boycott, the wrong people get in and they do what you are supposed to do. So no pay will not have any, no what, nothing. But to, 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 to contribute to East Africa development while they are boycotting. The but system. in any case, even if they had fronted a candidate, their numbers couldn't uh, make them victors. They would have got two representatives. And the NUPE would have had a very powerful voice in the running and the development of the East African community. I don't know who advised Nupe to boycott. See, the, the challenge. One of them is a lawyer, <laughs> the leader of the opposition in parliament. Opposition in parliament. Did he put in an input? Th this is the challenge now. Mm -hmm. That as per the protocol, the opposition has three sl uh, slots. Out of the three, uh, DP is in marriage, for lack of another word, with NRM, and so is UPC. So that alone could not even have uh, make noob in any case have uh, any slot because literally, if DC uh, doesn't have numbers, neither does noob uh, have numbers, and so was DP. The reason for which DP's candidate went through is because of their cooperation with NRM, which has been the trend because even Mbide, uh, Mukasa Mbide, it is the same the same politics they played for Mbide to go through. Do you think even if Nope had brought a candidate, that could even make them have one slot in any event? If, if Nope had, uh, had nominated a candidate, at least two of them, even one, would have been elected to the East African Legislative Assembly. One alone can make a difference. <laughs> He would speak with the voice of Nupe, even if he's alone. But I expect the two could have been elected because of its number. Okay. 
So it was counterproductive. The, the thing that I was quoting, I didn't finish. The British Prime Minister, they told him, don't Boycott. do this job. Don't be elected. And he said, if you boycott the election, the wrong people will be elected and they will be legislating for you. That is a disaster. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that, um, that was um, Mode's opening remarks uh, in regards to briefly what had transpired in, this, uh, in these days. I want Justice Kanyahamba to discuss the citizenship. And purely, I will always quote that this is your work. So everywhere we, found, we find faults, we shall put it onto you with your committee at a time as a generation. Citizenship here, straight away, you began by saying that every person who, on the commencement of this constitution, is a citizen of Uganda, shall continue to be such a citizen. A question that came in, uh, in our inbox because we had advertised that we would discuss citizenship. Wasn't this a direct move for you people to give, to award citizenship to people who weren't indigenously Ugandans? To give what? People who, because you see, in, your, in the question you made, mm -hmm. straight away, uh, chapter 9. We said, so who was the citizen chapter of three, Uganda? Rather, who, who had been citizens of Uganda? By, Shall I automatically become a citizen? I understood. What did, what did you mean? Because literally, some people... When have... Uganda became independent, mm. we were already citizens. You and me, Museven, the delegates who were in the parliament, mm. all the MPs of parliament, were citizens. Weren't they? But, so we are saying, whoever... The obvious, that whoever was a citizen when we became but, independent, you know, shall remain independent. I don't see any problem there. The commencement of the constitution of 1995, yes. this is what you are indicating here, not That's the right. independence. That's right. After the commencement of this constitution, 1995, mm. whoever was a citizen of Uganda before remains, remains okay. a citizen. That included Museven, Kanyihamba, Wakana Lugunda, and uh, Norman. You became automatically <laughs> citizens of Uganda. I don't see anybody having any problem with that understanding. Article 10, mm -hmm. citizenship by birth, and this is how it... Uh, and those are the ones I'm talking about, uh -huh. including others who became... We had the people the from Sudan, uh -huh. we had the people from Rwanda, and people who came from other countries. They were living in Uganda. Before the 1995 constitution. Yes. So if they are born in Uganda at the gate of independence, they automatically became citizens. And unless they were the children of diplomats. Mm -hmm. Diplomats and children, their children don't become citizens automatically. But being in a country when you are born, even in other, other countries, except Nazi Germany, which, had, which has been uh, wiped out, you become automatically a citizen by birth. Because you are in Uganda when independence comes. I need clarity on this. Mm -hmm. You said in the constitution you people made that uh, every person born in Uganda, one of whose parents or grandparents is or was a member of any of the indigenous communities existing and residing within the borders of Uganda as per the first day of February 1926. Why did you come up with the 1926? What is so special about this year? Because in 26 there was an order in the council hmm. from the Queen of England, or rather it was the king then, yeah. saying that that's all the our council said. Anybody whose parent, like the one we are talking about, mm. who was a citizen on that order to uh, 2002. 1926. Yes. 
is automatically a citizen of Uganda. So we were coping that because it was a good provision. Okay. So we were just repeating what the order in the council. Remember, we were protected. It was ordering all the colonies, protectors which you are one, saying foreigners who were born to one of their parents or grandparents who was a Ugandan citizen, become citizens by that connection. There's no problem. We never saw any problem with that. Okay. Um, mm. Uh, sabbatical, I don't know, a, a paragraph B here. Mm -hmm. Every person born in or outside Uganda, one of whose parents or grandparents was at the time of birth of that person, is, it, is, a, is, is a citizen by birth. How? Yeah. That's what I that? have just explained. There Someone was an born? order in the council governing all the protection that currently saying such a person. Is a Uganda citizen. Even when you're born outside Uganda? Yes. Because when you are born outside Uganda, your father is still a Ugandan. Your grandparent is still a Ugandan. Therefore, we are saying you also become Ugandan, even when you are born. The, the making of the constitution was not to punish anybody or to outlaw anybody who was already a citizen of Uganda. Some critics. And the people we found who were already citizens of Uganda, whether by the law of ours, which was colonial, rather protected to law, or the British law, which governed that, we accepted as citizens of Uganda. Your critics mm -hmm. have come up with a belief that you were creating a space for people who had gone into exile, who had either exiled themselves and you wanted to bring them on board as part of Ugandans, even when they had been born outside Uganda. And that's the reason for which you created this in particular to protect them. People, <laughs> uh, people who were undesirable, aliens, did not include Ugandans who went into exile. I am told you, and the one who made that statement, that any person who had one parent, a father or a grandfather, whether he was outside or in heaven, automatically became a citizen of Uganda by operation of law, which was the imperial order. We accepted that order because we thought it was reasonable. Do you think it's still relevant mm? in your view? Mm. If you say, because literally, it's as if you want to say that you had been compelled by such an imperial order. Does it? No, I didn't say we were persuaded. Persuaded. Persuading and the compelled and is different. 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 We are persuaded that the imperial law granting citizens whose father or parents were Ugandan was reasonable and we should adopt it. That's what we said. Um, there was nothing wrong with that. Article 11. And there is no wait a minute. Mm. So if, if the person who was in exile at the time is, has committed an offense, then we are bringing him home to pursue to them. He's near us now. <laughs> we will pursue to them. We didn't say under their, their mistakes or their criminals, we will be crimes, we will forget him, forgotten and forgiven. We never see that. Does that ease the process for which one can become a dual citizen? Uh, in the event that you are born outside Uganda and then you acquire... No, the at the time we made the constitution, we did not include in our constitution dual, dual citizenship. citizenship. Citizenship was enacted by parliament when CA has uh, already finished his work and we already had a constitution in the place of the 1995. So the delegates did not have a part At the time, uh, in making uh, the jurisdiction. It was an amendment made later by 
the parliament elected under the NRM, uh, under the, the old constitution. And I think the, the, the current constitution. And I think the reason they did was somebody convinced them we had omitted to enact dual citizenship in the constitution. And they convinced the parliament and the president to do it, to do what they called it was an omission in our state. One of the recommendations, I believe, no man, sorry, uh, Nobat Mao, as a Minister of Justice and Constitutional Affairs, we will make, we will not include that because it has already been enacted. So again, we shall be coming to what does it mean to be yes, citizens of our country. It's yeah. a very, very important thing. Okay. Well, because if we are not a citizen of any given country, or recognized country, you are a fugitive <laughs> in where you are staying. You are stateless. And we wanted to avoid, and every constitution avoids, people being stateless. It is discouraged by the United Nations, by all human rights organizations, and we are complying with international law. Okay. We have three minutes to break. I want to ask you, uh, still under Article 11, where you people said that any child, a, a child under the age of 18 years, sorry, a child of not more than five years of age found in Uganda whose parents are not known shall be presumed to be the citizen of Uganda. Good. Again, we debated that. And they were the unanimity. That provision was based on what I have already told you. The avoidance international of, law, avoidance of stateless yes, avoiding stateless people or people without a board anywhere. Mm -hmm. They are they are called refugees. So we are saying we cannot allow all refugees to be citizens of Uganda. Mm -hmm. However, whatever method they came in. But the younger children who are innocent <laughs> and they are found in Uganda. Either, and they we are, don't know their parents. Those should become citizens. Where would we put them then? They will need no money. <laughs> if we didn't know. give them citizenship, where would they go? Who no would one. take them? Who would care the, of them? But there is this is there Jesus is. himself, some of us are Christian, mm. said, Suffer my children to come in. Because they have their they are children. The word is true. So anybody who asks, why did you allow these stateless children to become Ugandans? They are in Uganda. Ask him, where did you want them to take them? I want to give you a practical example. Yes. We have insurgencies in, uh, Eastern Co in Western Congo, mm -hmm. and that is also now, rather now, Western Uganda, but yes. not part of Congo. Yes. You find this young kid of not more than five years. Mm. Literally, you know that this kid originates from Congo. So why would you make that person automatically a Ugandan citizen when you know that the Read it the paragraph <laughs> again. <laughs> Let me read it to you again. Read it from it the says, Constitution. A child not more than five years of age found in Uganda whose parents are not known. Thank you. Not known. <laughs> but where this insurgency is bring about it? be not known. <laughs> So the ones who have got parents in no, Congo, no parents. they go to their parents. But you have But the one we are catering for, uh, where the parents are, and you know when not. But from uh, the, where the insurgents are, you know these, they have crossed the borders, even when you don't know their parents. No, no, no. They please, <laughs> please. Do you know their parents in Newman? You know they have because, come from, <laughs> come from Well, that's what they are catering for. Is for children whose parents or grandparents are unknown. And they are meandering close to the borders. So eventually well, they are meandering in Uganda in my compound. They become 
Oh, next door to the Kabaka, <laughs> their parents and <laughs> grandparents are unknown. And those who are saying they should be regarded as Ugandan. We, uh, <laughs> I will ask you, uh, my producer to give me just a minute before we go for a break. I you know I am hitting uh, this time. Just one minute to, to let Justice clear this. Start with beginning with Article 12 straight away. A child under the age of 18, of 18 years, neither of whose, neither of whose parents is a citizen of Uganda, who is adopted by a citizen of Uganda, shall, on application, be registered as citizen of Uganda. Yes. Then again, logical. The man is not a Ugandan. Mm. He is adopted by a Ugandan. Mm. Then it is logical that he becomes the son. I have an adopted daughter here, by the way, who mm. looks after me and you. Mm. But we, she was a Ugandan before. She's still a Ugandan. Mm. But she's my daughter. daughter. Everybody, including the law, accepts adoption. she's my daughter by adoption. Mm. Similarly, where a Ugandan adopts a child, uh, 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 yeah, uh, aged eight, 18. Uh, below 18, that boy or girl becomes a Ugandan citizen. If we, go, we added another safety mm, application, if they themselves apply or their parents apply to make them Ugandan, okay. Mm. Uh, so, what the operates mm. is the law saying he's now a son of a Ugandan, mm. <laughs> and that was the son of a Ugandan. If he applies to be registered as citizen, it should it be automatic. Okay, our viewers, we are breaking for one minute strictly. As you also know, we always, once we say we are breaking for a minute, it becomes a minute. We're coming back to discuss uh, Article 12, that is citizenship by registration, where I have issues. I have come with my national ID. I want Justice Kanyahamba to tell us the justification for which our IDs expire and so many other questions therein. Don't go away. Alternative Dig Talk. Real issues. Real talk. Fellow citizens, following the sequence of events, Uganda seems to be at political crossroads. I'm not a servant of anybody. <laughs> Madam, I know the law. As such, Alternative Digital brings you the Interfest show with retired Colonel Dr. Kiza Vesuje. Let's keep on the same page on Alternative Digital. As he gives you the alternatives on the transition question, rule of law, human rights and freedom, youth inclusion in governance, economic stagnation, as he confirms. I'll be always here Saturday from 10 a.m in the morning be there don't miss the live discussion on the alternative uganda digital tv facebook pages and the alternative uganda youtube channel migrant stakeholders run the alternative dig talk real issues real talk
questions of a minute or so, we are back. Uh, we are streaming live on the Alternative Uganda Facebook page and also Digital TV Facebook pages. Uh, at later on, the show will be on our YouTube channel, the Alternative Uganda. We are with Justice Kanyahamba breaking down this constitution to the best of his knowledge so that a local citizen can understand every single word herein. We are apparently discussing the citizenship, and that is chapter three. Uh, now we are tackling citizenship by registration as per article, uh, article 12. And this is how it goes. Every person born in Uganda, A, at the time whose birth uh, 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 neither, of, neither of his or her parents and none of his or her grandparents had diplomatic status in Uganda. Yes. Uh, to, uh, a Roman to hear. Neither of his or her parents and none of his or her grandparents was a refugee in, uh, in Uganda. We're talking about uh, citizenship by No, finish is it. Uh, B here says, who has lived continuously in Uganda since the 9th day of October 1962 shall, on application, be entitled to be registered as a citizen of Uganda? Yes. In other words, people who were born in Uganda, not because they are without their parents or grandparents being diplomat. diplomat. Mm. Because if you are the son of a diplomat, even if you're born in Uganda, you don't and your father is a diplomat, you remain part of that country. Mm. You don't gain citizenship because we are born in by Russia. birth. But if you are born in Uganda, and you are not the son of another son of a diplomat. And you apply, because you are a foreigner. Mm. You apply to become a citizen of Uganda. And you have li lived here for how long? Since the ninth day of October 1962. When we got independence. Yeah. Then they are directing the register of a company, the ministry responsible that you register those people as citizens of Uganda automatically. You have to apply first. But the ministry or the public service people don't have a choice. They have to grant, to grant you Uganda citizenship. And what we have heard or seen is those government officials abusing that right and asking for payment. Mm -hmm. The constitution never talks about on payment. Mm -hmm. Just the, the title. Those the the officials have added those words there, and they are illegal. Mm -hmm. I am sure. surprised that nobody has challenged them. But that also is in accord with international law and our constitution should comply mm -hmm. with the obligations imposed on the constitutional or on our constitution by law which we are a signatory to. We are implementing what the law says. Sub article 2, mm -hmm. the following persons shall upon application be registered as citizens of Uganda. Clause A, every person married to a Ugandan citizen upon proof of a legal... That is, I, I was, I, I married a foreigner, a, an English woman from UK. She's got a passport. She applied to become a Ugandan citizen <laughs> by Under proving that she was married to a Ugandan. marriage certificate from Kanyamba. Okay. That, that is again logical and right. What mm -hmm. happens when you divorce? Does that person lose citizenship automatically? When you divorce uh, your wife, who is called Norman, divorces you, 
you remain with that name. So my widow, if I die, or if she divorces what? me, or I divorce her, mm. which is unlikely ever, mm. she remains in Uganda citizen. <laughs> but <laughs> you have to explain to our viewers how, because you see, this person obtained the citizenship because you had a relationship, call it now a marriage. And she has proven she's married to Justice Kanyahamba. Yes. Now that business does not exist anymore. Why would such a person remain with the citizenship? Because the law everywhere, international says, when your wife who was a Ugandan divorces you, or marries another man, yeah, it was my second question, by the way. She divorces you, marries another man. Another man. She remains a Ugandan. Like when our daughters and the sisters marry other men, they remain a Ugandan. But if she wants now, she can apply for the other country to become a citizen of her husband. If and they, she has a right to do If so. the husband is a non-Ugandan. They say uh, the husband is a Tanzanian. Okay. And the Shema is a Tanzanian, divorces the Ugandan. She remains a Ugandan. Until if she goes to And uh, she's, these, these countries give you dual citizenship. citizenship. So she will remain a Ugandan and acquire tan Tanzanianship by marrying a Tanzania. Hmm. But if she wishes to see uh, to, to sever her uh, relation with Uganda, she is also entitled to apply to become a Uganda citizen. And when she does that, for us, we accept dual citizenship. So she would acquire dual citizenship of Uganda and Tanzania. But if she really hates Uganda, that she, wa she doesn't want ever to be associated with Uganda, she would say, I denounce like the Uganda citizenship. And we can't refuse her to denounce it. Then she would only be a Tanzanian. Okay, I'll close we, we tried our best to, break it to, down to, to include that. everything. Uh, close B here. Every person who has legally and voluntarily, voluntarily migrated to and has been living in Uganda for at least 10 years or such other period prescribed by parliament. By the way, let me tell you that uh, this touches me personally. Because of being my children, two of my children decided voluntary. Joel and her partner, or rather her wife, his wife, Catherine, when she, Catherine married, she automatically became a British citizen. <coughs> but she was the daughter of a Ugandan. So she also decided to, be to remain a Ugandan citizen. So she has got dual citizenship. And our constitution, as amended, allows it. Mm. So both Joel and, the wife. and his wife, my children, have dual citizenship. Both they are both British, British and, Ugandan. and the Ugandan. That's number one. Break this Secondly, mm. there is a, a businessman from Korea called Jeff Lee. He's my first <coughs> son. He owns Shanghai restaurant. He applied to become a Ugandan citizen because he loves Uganda. I even gave him a letter of reference. He's now a Uganda citizen by registration. Mm. Mr. Lee is it, he's from North Korea. I rather from uh, Taiwan. Taiwan. Next uh, <coughs> to China. But his wife didn't want to become a Ugandan at the time. She remains a 
a Taiwan citizen. Why her husband has dual citizenship, Taiwan's and the Ugandan. Uh, actually, recently, his wife inquired how she can have a permanent residence in the Uganda, because they have got good business here okay. without ha having to become a Uganda. Okay. And they gave her this, the advice Clo as a former lawyer. Close C. Mm -hmm. Every person who on the commencement of this constitution has lived in Uganda for at least 20 years. So the confusion here now, uh, the, okay, myself what confuses me here. Mm. In clause B, we are talking about a person that has been in Uganda not less than, okay, no, for at least 10 years. Mm -hmm. But clause C, you are saying uh, every person who on the commencement of this constitution has lived in Uganda for at least 20 years. What did you mean? Uh, no, finish it continuously. Okay. Maybe that now that that puts me to pushes me to. Who has lived sub, in Uganda for twenty sabbatical, years? Well. Sabbatical three, which says clause two a of this article applies also to a person who was married to a citizen of Uganda who, but for his or her death, would have continued to be a citizen of Uganda under this constitution. A person who was what? Sabbatical 3 says, mm. clause 2a of this article applies also to a person who was married to a citizen of Uganda who, but for his or her death, would have continued to be a citizen of Uganda under this constitution. The uh, clause a they refer to here is every person married to a Ugandan. That's right. So again, it is logical. When a person, a foreigner, like a Tanzania or a Briton, has been married to a Ugandan, do you know that they have children? <laughs> they may not have, but most likely they will have children. Those children, we already said, they become Ugandan. Mm. So it is natural that their parent was a foreigner and is a Ugandan citizen anyway, remains a citizen. To look up to her children. <laughs> okay. Sub article 4, where yeah. a person has been registered as a citizen of Uganda under clause 2a of this article, mm -hmm. and the marriage by virtue of which that person was registered is very good. It takes us back what I was asking you. Is it that, what? Uh, that, uh, uh, that, and the marriage mm -hmm. by virtue of which that person was registered is mm -hmm. clause a. Annulled mm -hmm. or otherwise declared void by a court mm -hmm. or tribunal of competent jurisdiction mm -hmm. or dissolved. Mm -hmm. That you. person shall, unless he or she renounces the citizenship, continue. That's what you had asked. Yes, right? again, it is <laughs> okay. very logical and the rational. They don't lose citizenship automatically. When, when Ugandan is you no longer sleep with your uh, non Ugandan, you no longer sleep with your husband. Does that one does not to deprive <laughs> <laughs> you, you are sitting in the ship. Otherwise, it seems you had uh, acquired it on the condition marriage. that you continue marrying to the Ugandan, which is not correct. Okay. Mm. Uh, Article 13, citizenship by naturalization and mm. it's so much confusing to, to many out there. Mm. Parliament shall by law provide for the acquisition and loss of citizenship by naturalization. What did you mean? Again, you have... What is naturalization? Let's in say itself? Uh, naturalization... Yes, to our viewers who... Is to become a citizen by law. To put it simply, you acquire a citizen by applying and the minister and his colleagues say you are fit and proper to be a Uganda citizen. What's the difference, what's the difference between naturalization and citizenship by registration? Citizenship by what? Citizenship by registration, that is um, article, article 12, because I want a distinction between these two articles. No, if you apply citizenship yeah, by registration, and it is granted, 
because you have no connection with the bars mm. or being a diplomat or whatever, then that is what they call citizenship by naturalization. Okay. When you register, you apply for citizenship. You say, I am a Kenyan, mm. but I have lived in Uganda for 20 years. I want to be registered as a citizen. And the officials grant you that citizenship. You become a citizen by registration. You've been registered as a citizen. So the process of making you a citizen is registration. So, the, the, so registration and naturalization means the same. I'm worried that they did not even put, it is just as plain as you, 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 you put it, you people. It has just one sentence, no explanations, no clauses, nothing. That's how it stands. We go to article. You see, many things in law assume certain things. When they register you at the... Bound is assumed mm. that those conditions may apply or are there. Mm. Uh, Article 14, mm. we want uh, that's loss of citizenship by registration. Yes, a person may a person may be deprived of his or her citizenship if acquired by registration on any of the following grounds. Uh, this was repealed. Uh, um, uh, uh, clause was, was repealed. Voluntary. But I, I will explain what it means. Mm. Let's assume that uh, um, General Kaihura mm. had been a citizen by registration. Mm. And then he's accused of committing offenses in favor of Rwanda. Then, if he is convicted of those offenses, that it is true, he spied for Rwanda, mm -hmm. then the government of Uganda, the, we people and the courts have a say to de register him as a citizen of Uganda mm -hmm. for committing offenses. Such a, such an mm -hmm. offense. Mm -hmm. Uh, in fact, this is exactly what you've just talked about. Voluntary service in armed forces or security forces of a country hostile to Uganda. That's now in line to what you have just explained. Mm. Uh, clause C, acquisition of Uganda citizenship by fraud. Deceit. By what? Fraud. Fraud. Fraud? Yes. Mm. Deceit, bribery, or having made intentional and deliberate false stat statements mm -hmm. in his or her application for citizenship and espionage against Uganda. That's exactly, I think, what you have just explained mm. in the mm. such crimes. Mm. Dual citizenship, which many have interest in. Uh, Dual citizenship. citizenship? Yes, that's mm. uh, Article Article 15. A citizen of Uganda of 18 years and above who voluntarily acquires the citizenship of a country other than Uganda may retain the citizenship of Uganda subject to this constitution and, and any law enacted by parliament. Clause two, a person, uh, a person who is not citizen of Uganda may, on acquiring the citizenship of Uganda subject to this constitution and any law enacted by parliament, retain the citizenship of another country. You people, you re I think this is after you, you, your time as Minister for Justice. Some of these uh, clauses we are repealed. They came later, yeah. yeah they are repealed. Mm. But um, five was retained. Where the law of a country other than Uganda requires a person who marries a citizen of that country to renounce the citizenship of his or her country by virtue of that marriage, a citizen of Uganda who is deprived of his or her citizenship by virtue of that marriage 
shall on the dissolution of that marriage, if he or she thereby loses his or her citizenship acquired by that marriage, become a citizen of Uganda. Mm. I so that, that is to avoid a person becoming stateless. So you are married to a German, mm. and the German law requires that you be registered mm. as a German. Mm. Then the German citizen divorces you. If we didn't have that provision in our law, you, you become <laughs> stateless. So in order to avoid you being stateless, we say you resume Uganda citizenship. That is very logical and the, good. There, this, uh, there is this controversial qu uh, concern mm. among the citizens. Mm. Both those that consider themselves being more of Ugandans than others, and also those who think they are being sidelined. In particular, there is the Rwanda question. Mm -hmm. In our constitution, you indicated and put Rwanda as one of the tribes in Uganda. Rwandis. Rwandis, actually, yeah, Rwandis. Mm. With the little I have read, I have not seen any other country with an other tribe's name, for lack of another word, in their constitution as being citizens. What did you mean? We have Rwandis, and we have so we have Rwandis of Ugandan origin, and Rwandis of Rwanda, and Rwandis of Burundi. So how how did you? Why did you come up? Read with that? that thing again. No, here I, it, it is a question that had been in box to me before we came. Yeah, that means. And repeat the question. The again. question is, what did you consider to have Rwandis in our constitution as uh, as as a tribe, and yet they have a country by the name of Rwanda. We have a district in Uganda mm. called Bufumbira Kisoro. in Kisoro. Many Ugandans in that district were born citizens of Uganda by birth. But their cousins in our neighboring country are called Rwandis. Mm. We debated that in the Constitution. You see, people don't, don't remember what we did. Mm. So we said, Banyarwanda, who are Ugandans by birth and the citizenship, from now on shall be called Bafumbira. <laughs> so there was a debate even in CA. Mm. There are other Banyarwanda in Uganda who prefer to remain Banyarwanda. We are born in Banyarwanda. Yeah. We shall remain Banyarwanda, Banyarwanda, which is another logical. <laughs> so we had the two logics. On whether you fighting. call them over from Bira yes. or so they retain the name. Some the said, we are always confused and embarrassed. When you get to go to employment, whether a passport when you're yeah, in Uganda. Yeah, it's my next question. Then they ask you, are you in Uganda from Uganda or from yeah. Uganda? So in order, to, <laughs> in order to avoid that question, we gave a choice. In the in, 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 they live two communities. Some are called Bahutu, mm. some are called Batusi. Batusi. And some of you Most of the Batusi, led by the then Solicitor General Kabasi <laughs> and the Justice Mulenga, who are both Batusi, Batusi, to to say, even if we were born, and they were, <laughs> in Uganda, we want to remain in Banyarwanda. Then the majority of Kisoro, Bufumbira, who are mainly Bahutu, they are in Rwanda, but they are Bahutu. Like in Nankoli, we have Bahi, uh, Bahi Bahi Nankoli, who are both Bahima and Bahiru. And Bahiru. So these uh, Bahutu are equivalent to Bahiru. Mm. And they form the overwhelming majority of Kisoro district. Mm. They decided, led by the late Mulenga. principal judge, you know, for him he's a Mutusi. Mm. So for him he preferred, <laughs> we want to remain 
Banyarwanda. We want to remain but Banyarwanda. Wait a second, Justice Kanyamba. Mm -hmm. In your explanation, those who by looks and by origin or tribal looked like Tutsi preferred being called Banyarwanda. That's right. Whereas those who had the Hutu looks Look. or otherwise had wanted to be called... They Bafumbi. wanted uh -huh. to be called Bafumbi. To be called Bafumbi. 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 <laughs> and they both <laughs> achieved. We satisfied Yeah, both. by the way, yeah, because we re retained we the Bafumbi. We retained uh, Banyarwanda and, and we Bafumbi. retained Bafumbi. 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 Uh, the Batusi preferred to be misunderstood when they said, I am a Banyarwanda. They didn't mind people say, are you from Rwanda or from uh, Uganda. Uganda? They continue facing that problem. But to the, the Bairu, sorry, the, 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 the Bahutu, don't anymore. Because they are called Bafumbi, so which is in Uganda. <laughs> yeah. So that's the situation we have. There has been this concern mm -hmm. that you made this constitution, in particular to make Banyarwanda become Ugandans, because you were paying back to the likes of Kagame, you were paying back to the likes of uh, Gisa Rijema, you were paying back to the likes of Bunyanyezi, you were paying back to the likes of Dr. Bingana and others who had contributed to the NRA war. So, as a reason to pay back to them, because um, apparently Javier Mana had been on their case, you had to create space for them. No. We respected the boss. <laughs> <laughs> we respected the boss communities. Bafumbira, <laughs> who, uh, um, Bafumbira, we call their, their what, Zemikari. The, the, Bahutu. Bahutu. Mm -hmm. We respected them. We also respected our citizens who were known as uh, Batusi because we retained the Rwanda, Rwanda, which they wanted. So we have in Uganda, a community of, of Rwandis, <laughs> the likes of Gashumba and others and, who, uh, who, who, are, who are Tusi, including people like uh, Gashumba Kagame, himself, Frank Gashumba Nusuka. and others. Then we have people who are uh, Bafumbira, who happen to, majority of who happen to be uh, Bahutu. And they include people like the former president, Harry Biman. The former ambassador to Uganda, who was a Mchiga. <laughs> and the <laughs> <From Uganda>. so, <laughs> This is the complication of our border areas. And we tried our best to, to get provide for everybody. But then, how mm. come... Uh, that there is confusion of, young, of people of that uh, origin. And Gashumba has so many times come up to, uh, I mean, to, to demonstrate, for lack of another word, that when they go to immigration, even during the registration of the national IDs, they had issues. They would be bounced back. And there are so many, in fact, who had been registered, but their IDs haven't been issued to them, simply because they were open to say, I am Rwandi. Let me tell you, the yeah, one that Rwandese, we are you, but Rwandese, we are preferred by the majority of Batusi, mm. led by Kabasi, who is still alive, mm. practicing law. He was then our, 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 our solicitor. There was a choice given to them. Do you want to remain in Nyarwanda? The majority of supporters said yes. Not all of them, but the majority. Do you want to become a Mufumbira? <laughs> Do you want to become a Mufumbira? The, the ba, Two cities said but, no. No, no. The, ba, the Bahutu. Said the, the majority of the Bahutu said no. Because of the problem I told you, that uh, if me as a Uganda I say I'm a Muchiga, they automatically give me my passport. Mm, yeah. If a Mutusi Mnyarwanda comes, in, I want a passport, he has also first to answer, Some are you from Rwanda or Uganda? Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. 
before they are fluent, that they were Ugandan. The Bafumbia who are Bahutu have no problem. Because when they come say I'm in Mufumbia, okay. Mufumbia so is in Uganda. It doesn't raise any concerns. Yeah. And uh, why, why, in your view, as a veteran politician and also a judge and uh, so many titles, why is the Rwanda question a big issue here, unlike other tribes whom we share with other countries? Because we have, we have, the, we, we have uh, people in Sibasen, Sibasen, yeah. Yeah, the Samia of Uganda, and mm. no one ever questions them once they come to apply for passports or national IDs. No one bothers them. But when someone says, I am with one this, even if they are born in Irwengo, Zimbabwe, they have concerns. What is it that is eating them up, for lack of another word? Because of history. Other Kenyans don't despise, mm. historically, Basamia. Mm -hmm. Neither do we. But we didn't have Kalenjin, the, by the way. Kalenjin in of the Uganda. culture of Banyarwanda, and in Rwanda, the two communities, Batusi and the Bahutu, historically, have always despised, the Bahutu have always been despised by the Batusi. And vice versa. They are regarded to be a Mahutu, is to be a, a, common a servant. servant. Not even a common, <laughs> a servant. I think the story is like uh, when Mutusi was grazing, they are graze, cattle raise, grazers mainly, whereas the Bahutu are uh, agriculturists. They grow crops generally. So one day, a Mutusi was grazing his cattle. And uh, in the, the land, of the Bahutu. Mm. When it rained, he went to the Mutu's house to seek shelter. Mm. The Mutu gave him a chair. Mm. The Mutu stayed at his ground. He said, You man, why are you staying here? Don't you know that you can't share a house with the Mutu? <laughs> the man went into the rain. <laughs> so that is that history. the problem, the history we had. Those of us who were in the country, people like Mulenga, myself, we knew the problem. Mulenga was my best man to my wedding because he's in Nixo, Rwanda. And we knew each other during higher education. He was my best man. Mm. Then the Solicitor General, who served me, Kabasi, was also a Mutusi. But the principal judge, our principal judge called Ntabova, was, was a Mutu. <laughs> and he posed to them when they wanted to retain Rwanda. Mm. He wa was opposed to. Another very senior Mutu mm. uh, uh, was a judge of the High Court. He joined Hubbard in fighting the retention of the name Rwanda or Rwandese. So you can see we were just not legislating in peace and tranquility. We had to provide for both communities and you succeeded because they were very useful to Uganda. They had to serve the Uganda very well. I have told you. The, their former ambassador in Uganda was even a Muchiga <laughs> to make matters worse. <laughs> okay, we, we, we have. So, mm. making a constitution for the neighbor of one, this can, of one country, Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, mm. when our tribes and the communities are all mixed up, is not an easy job. I think that's why they call. The Uganda constitution, the best in the region, because we did our best to intermarry and, and reconcile so. those different tribes.
Patricia Among here asks, and that's the reason for which I had bought this ID, I think it's going to be our last question, because literally with citizenship, it's, uh, it's wide and it's, it's, it, it needs a lot of logic and more time. Uh, why do our IDs expire? Uh, this, is, is, this is Patricia Among. And I have my ID here as an example, and I believe you also have one here that expires. Mine is expiring in 2029. Why should my citizenship expire? And in case That's it's a very, very go? important question. <laughs> and the name on you should guide the Ugandans to discuss it separately. Some people call it a fraud. Others say to have Uganda ID, you must be a member of the NRM. So in other words, another way, another document for NRM. <laughs> and I'll tell you an example. When you go to get this ID, at least when I first went, I have mine here, it is valid. They took me in a wheelchair. I was registered here, here, here at the Buziga. But the people who were in charge had been imported from Kabale. Because they are members of the NRM. <laughs> the chairman here, who was in charge of our registration for these ID things, was a Muchiga called Nchivirehi. <laughs> He's the one who welcomed me, and we were talking to Muchiga with the people who were in charge. Then I asked him, how do you know who was born here? You have just come from Kabul. <laughs> do you know on Wamuzukuruani? He said, this exercise is not for identifying people. It is to find out who supports the NLM. <laughs> I can swear in the name of God, that's what they told me. There were strangers here, but they were in the church. Of the man in charge was Brigadier, I forget his name, he's a Mnyarwanda. Brigadier Quirinjira. Quirinjira. But he's from Kabali. Mm -hmm. And when you go to Kabali, most people think he's a, a Mchiga. But he's a Mnyarwanda. Mm -hmm. Not only that, he has got a, a personal relationship and the knowledge of Kagame, the president of mm -hmm. Rwanda. But you put them so, here, let me finish here. So, it's they fire. said, this program is not for everybody. It's a program of getting ideas. It is for identifying who votes in a <laughs> party. <laughs> That's when you, you better swallow it and should be discussed nationally. Because what I'm coming to is illogical. Mm -hmm. When my children, my son Joel, and his, their children and Catherine, who is born in Kunjiri, came here. For Joel, because they know I may make noise. <laughs> <laughs> they know you are contacted. They, they gave him... He came, he traveled on the British passport. passport. They allowed him automatically. Mm. When they show custody, knowing is it might be. My son, do you know what they said? When my son said, I am the son of Kanyamba. See, Uganda, we are not only ignorant. We don't ask. Mm. They ask him, are you adopted <laughs> by your father? <laughs> he said, no, I am the son. <laughs> They have never discovered that my wife is English, and obviously, if you mix the English blood and the mine, you are lucky to get the color of my son, whom they call mixed of mixed right. marriage. Mm -hmm. But because he saw he was brown and I am black, when he told his son and said, "Are you adopted?" <laughs> Very rude. My son was not amused. <laughs> but forget that. When they saw Catherine, the they knew he was a potential voter uh, in the Uganda. 
So they ask, where is your ID? <laughs> <laughs> the most important ID for any citizen is, is a okay. passport. She had a, a passport. So they realized maybe she may not be in a name. Mm -hmm. So they said, where is your national That's ID? Right. Making sure that she must be, she must have ID as a Uganda citizen in order to vote in elections. So the purpose of ID in Uganda of ID is, mm. is in order to identify you or to enable you to do things as a citizen. But it is intended to, for you to vote one party, NRA. And anybody challenging me, bring him next week, and we debate together here. <laughs> okay, uh, the final question. Why mm. should our IDs have expired dates? Are there other IDs in this world? Precisely. Once you have ID, passports internationally, no, ten expire years, ten years. every 10 years. Ten years yeah. Mine has been renewed. Mm. I had the one which said Uganda passport. When I took it there, they gave you automatically, Africa? I was given East Africa? East African title with Uganda there, mm. uh, which expired <coughs> the next 10 years. What I have told you is the answer. Because we vote very regularly in the local government, we vote regularly for every five years in national election. So for that reason, because people should be voting in a day, it is temporary. <laughs> every election, you must have a new one. <laughs> you can yeah. you must start thinking really seriously, really. I thought everybody knew that. I raised this issue in my company uh, some years ago. That why is it that in Buganda where I live, I am now a uh, waka waka. Why do you need to bring Bachiga Banyarwanda to process our ID he as if they are the ones who, who know, know who, are born who here we, we produce here, who know <laughs> who the chairman, where he came from, whatever. And they gave me the answer because this exercise is not intended for not anybody right. else except supporters of the NRM. And then you have politicians around, they hear me talking like that at the mouths of this world. Uh, uh, even my great friend, uh, who has resigned the Kanyamba Foundation, Matembe, knows that. They keep quiet. I, I'm writing to him, said, I think when you, you agreed to be chairman of Kanyamba Foundation, you had another agenda. Please reveal it. <laughs> okay. Uh, I will ask you to say your closing remarks. And then we shall catch you, our viewers, next week, Wednesday. Let Justice Kanyahamba say a word or half a word for that case in the next 40 or so seconds. And then we shall catch you up next week. Justice Kanyahamba, your closing remarks. Today, I was dealing Citizenship. with a passport issue. Somebody... I paid money, mm. being persuaded by some other person that he's very fast mm. to process the passport of my daughter in law, Catherine Katera, who is a Ugandan. Mm. But why is it she had already acquired a dual citizenship <coughs> because of her marriage? So that person whom I paid a million shillings to process the passport. Never called me again. <laughs> Catherine, the passport was not renewed, mm. and she went to the UK, expired with him mm. on the British passport. Had she not had a British passport, Should she would still be stranded here. Mm. Because that man said, passports are not available. Uganda mm. possible. Yeah, they aren't available. Uh, yes. That's what is in the newspapers. The minister, I think, last week mm -hmm. justified there uh, such a delay and said they 
surprisingly, what was trending, they said that the Russia-Ukraine war affected their production. I don't know what you said. You can't make it surprise me. I don't know whether they operated from Ukraine, Ukraine or Russia. Russia. <laughs> That's what they said. Maybe it's uh, put in who prints passports because, uh, up and down. When my children, my, my, <laughs> my son and his son came to see me, mm. uh, they had to travel on British passport <laughs> because Uganda, they were shortage. Yeah, they are not there. But uh, the man who is versing came here today so and they took cousin because her, her passport has been here. They said they were short. Yeah. Short but they didn't give hard. us the reason why they were short. They but for British. him, he's promised. He will bring it on Monday. <laughs> Where is he getting it from? <laughs> he didn't know that they were, they, there was a shortage of those booklets. Yeah. They, there. <laughs> they, they said they were sh short of these passports. Yeah. But uh, the man who's supposed to So do you, he would get you one? <laughs> bring it on Monday. <laughs> Your closing remarks, sir. Where will he <laughs> get it from? <laughs> Your closing remarks, sir, then we should leave So it. what I say, mm. the other one, I ask you to do it. This job I am doing should be done by a paid expert. He may not be as good as me, but I think I'm doing a good job now, as you can hear. Then I think the government should be paying me and also allowances even me, both for of this us. job. <laughs> Both of us. The government. Well, you don't worry. <laughs> but the government should be paying for this job I am doing. Yeah. Sure. And the president or minister of finance or minister of foreign affairs is silent. I don't know whether any of them are learning anything about the constitution. <laughs> That's what I'm teaching, President Museveni. So I am saying make it public. That the professor Kanyahamba is doing Mao. a job. Your friend Mao is the Minister for Justice. Yeah, or, or Mao, <laughs> Minister for Justice, or whoever is the Minister of Foreign Affairs, or Dong. We shall Can give affairs. a copy to justice because he, he, he is the Minister now of Justice. So we need the justice and to be there. Affairs. You have taken initiative to, to close a gap which the government has ignored. Our constitution is clear. This constitution shall be immediately translated into various languages, local languages, local languages, and taught to schools, army cadets, and the police institutes. They have never done it. <laughs> Kanyihama now is doing it. The duty of the whole. But state. they are not paying me, <laughs> so I demand, Mr. President. The Minister of Finance, Kasaija. Justice and, and the Minister affairs. of Foreign Affairs. Internal Affairs. Internal Affairs. Internal Affairs. Or Dong Ka and then Kalindo Safiri. Please Safiri. give me my allowances. <laughs> I can't work for you for nothing. <laughs> okay, you're That's the last message. message. Okay, sir. We will see you next week, Wednesday. We haven't finished citizenship, by the way. There are still other uh, issues to discuss therein. And we promise, by God's grace, we shall be with you next week, Wednesday. Today there is voltage at 7 p.m. to 9, and there is uh, Kano Besige tomorrow at 10, and so many other shows. And it alone in the evening, we shall have the Snap Talk. And so many other shows. Let's keep, uh, let's keep it authentic with DigiTalk. May God bless all of you for good and my country. The Alternative DigiTalk. Real issues. Real talk.